Welcome to a series of videos dedicated to installing Ruby on Windows computers. So if you are a Mac user, you can feel free to skip this collection of videos. There is a separate batch of installation videos for Mac OS users immediately before this batch. If you are a Windows user, then you are in the right place. Now we are going to get to installing Ruby and our development environment in a lesson or two. But in this lesson, I want to introduce you to a piece of software that is already installed on your computer, and it is called PowerShell. PowerShell is going to be helpful for us a couple times throughout the course, uh, and it's going to be needed for us to verify that Ruby is successfully installed in a lesson or two. So let's go ahead and launch it and take a look at what it is. So we can go to our start menu on our Windows computer, and we can search for PowerShell. My typing, of course, is terrible. And let me try one more time. There we go. So I'm just going to type in power. You can see the PowerShell application appears. I'm going to click that. OK, and let me drag it to the center of the screen. So this is PowerShell. Sometimes what we call this is a terminal or a command line. And basically what it is is a program where we can issue text commands to Windows to execute. So before we had graphical user interfaces like this one behind the PowerShell, where we have icons and colors and backgrounds and animations, decades before we had that, this was the way that developers communicated with the computer. They simply issued the computer text commands, and the computer understood those te text commands and executed them. Now, even though this technology uh, or at least the foundation of this technology is decades old, there's still advantages to using applications like PowerShell in the modern world. For one, they tend to be faster at executing most commands because they don't have to worry about rendering a visual component for the user to see, such as an animation or a color, right, or a tile. It's just much more lower level and simply telling the computer what we want to do. So I don't want to spend too much time here, but I do want to introduce you to a couple commands that are going to be helpful for us uh, when we're using PowerShell throughout the course and when you're using it primarily to run Ruby files directly from this command line from this terminal. So just a few commands, and I promise it's not going to be anything crazy. So if you have the application opened, the first command that I want to introduce you to is going to be PWD. So I'm just going to type it out, PWD, and execute it. PWD is short for print working directory. And in technical terms, print simply means output. So print working directory simply means output the current directory that you are in within the PowerShell. So we know that on a computer, we have files and folders, and we can navigate through them. We can go down into a, a folder. We can go up into a folder. It's the exact same idea with something like Windows Explorer. So obviously, you've done something like this in the past. You've clicked into desktop, and that takes you to the desktop. And you can see right here where you are on the computer's hard drive. It's the exact same principle, but in the land of the PowerShell. So PWD will tell you where you currently are. And you can see right here that I am in C uh, users user. That is the directory that I'm currently in. We're also conveniently going to see that location to the left of the cursor. So right here is where the flashing prompt is, where I can enter my next command. To the left of that, it's going to tell us that we are currently in this directory. All right, so PWD to print the current working directory where we are in the file system. The next thing I want to show you is the command ls. What ls is short for is list, and it's going to list all of the files and folders within the current directory. So just like in Windows Explorer, where it shows you, here's all the files and folders that exist where you are, this is the equivalent command to do so in the PowerShell. So we can see within the user directory, we have a whole bunch of folders like documents, downloads, et cetera, right? So PWD to see where we are, LS to see the files and folders where we currently are, all right? And then the final command I want to show you in this lesson is CD. CD is short for change directory, and that's how we navigate the file system within PowerShell. So we can see here in this output that we have a desktop directory where I currently am. So I want to go into that desktop directory. I want to navigate or change into my desktop directory. So I'm going to use the command CD, and that is short for change directory. And once again, we can't simply say CD by itself because we have to tell PowerShell what directory we want to go into. So I'm going to do a space here, and I'm going to type desktop. That's the directory that I want to navigate into. 
So if I execute this by pressing enter, now we are in the desktop. We can see it appear to the left of the cursor, but if I want to confirm that, I can once again execute my pwd command, print working directory. That will tell us that we are on the desktop. If I want to see the files that are on the desktop and the folders as well, I can press ls and execute that command. We're going to see this hello txt file right here. It's actually the one that I also have on my desktop right here for reference. It's just showing us that what this PowerShell is displaying for us is the exact same thing we see in the visual interface. It's just doing so in a text world where there is no actual user interface, right? This file is the exact same file as we have right here. So that's how we navigate down into a directory. We write CD followed by that directory name. If we want to ever navigate up a directory, what we can do is do CD followed by two dots. That means go up one directory. So this will take us from the desktop folder back to the user folder. And if I were to do CD dot dot one more time, that would take us uh, up one more directory into users. So now you can see we're in users. If I want to go back down into user, I can do CD user like so. And now I'm back in the users user directory. All right. One other cool feature I want to show you about PowerShell is tab completion. So PowerShell is smart uh, enough to figure out many times what it is that you're trying to reference. So for example, if I use ls to output all of the files and folders in my current directory, we'll see this output that we just saw a couple moments ago. You'll notice that desktop is the only name in this list that starts with the characters DE, capital D, lowercase e. So if I type CD and then DE, just like a human being, this is enough for the PowerShell to figure out that we are referencing desktop. It looks at those characters that we have typed and it says, oh, the only thing that starts with that is desktop and I can figure out the rest if you tell me to do so. So once you type in those characters, you can press the tab key and that the uh, PowerShell will automatically auto-complete that for you. So you can see it's expanded that to be desktop. It has added some additional symbols before and after, but we don't really need to worry about it. The key takeaway is it's understood that we mean DE to be the beginning of desktop, and thus it's auto-completed that. And you'll notice when I execute this command, everything works as expected, and we are now on to desktop. And this doesn't just apply to folders. It also applies to files. So if there's any point in this course where you are using Ruby to run a file in the PowerShell and the file has a really long name, you can just type out the first couple characters of that file and press tab. And as long as that is enough information for the PowerShell to figure out what you mean, it will automatically complete the file name for you, which is not just faster, but also less prone to error because the computer is going to type it out instead of you. All right. So to summarize everything we learned in this lesson, the PowerShell is a command line application, also called a terminal application. It allows us to issue commands to Windows the exact same way we do with clicks and typing in a regular user interface such as this one, except this is the old school way. This is how we used to do it before we had modern interfaces. We simply issue a text command to Windows. We press enter to execute it. We learned a couple commands, PWD, uh, PWD to see the current directory that we are in, LS to see the current files and folders within the current directory, and then CD or change directory to change into a directory, or alternatively, you can do CD dot dot to go up one directory. And that's really all you need to know. Moving forward, if there's ever a point in the course where I open up a terminal or a PowerShell and I quickly navigate into a directory to get to a point where my Ruby code files are, just follow these uh, commands in order to do the same on your end. And that's really all you need to know. I don't want to overburden you with too much technical knowledge about the PowerShell, but these are critical developer commands that everybody needs to know just to be able to work with the file system in PowerShell. Okay. That's all there is to cover in this lesson, so I will see you in the next one.